Hello everybody, I am here today to show you how to make my classic bean and bacon soup right in the crock pot. It couldn't get easier, there's not a ton of ingredients um, and it's packed with flavor, delicious for any cold winter night when you're wanting something cozy and comforting that you didn't have to put a lot of work into because the crock pot did it all for you. Besides a little bit of chopping, it couldn't be simpler. If you want to see how to make this recipe, we're going to rewind and go back to last night and I will show you everything. So just keep watching. Okay, to make this wonderful bean and bacon soup, you're going to only need a few ingredients. You're going to need a crock pot, of course. Um, I'm just using my large one. You're going to need two bags um, of great northern beans and these are 16 ounces, so you're going to need two of those. You're also going to need a half a pound of carrots, so that's roughly half that bag. You're going to need two onions, some garlic, so I'm using a fresh head. You're going to need one and a half pounds of bacon. I'm just using the right. You're going to need it fried and cooling, so that's that. You're also going to need a box of chicken stock. And this is just the Rachel Ray brand. Four cups of water. And for spices, you're going to need one bay leaf. Oh, there we go. One bay leaf. You're going to need half a teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes. Um, I have just a sprig of some fresh rosemary. Dried would work. And if you're going to use dried, it's half a um, teaspoon. Half a teaspoon of some dried thyme and salt and pepper to taste. So this could be simpler. I'm making this the night before. We're kind of rewinding here. It's going to cook all night. Um, you're going to cook it on low for 10 hours, 10 to 12, or you can cook it on high for 6 to 8. And um, I'm going to cook it on low all night. So let's get started. So as I said, you're going to want to cook your bacon first. Um, I'll break this up a little bit more, but I cut it up before I fried it just to make it a little bit easier. You're just going to want it crispy. And then you're going to take two small onions. These are sweet onions, and you're going to dice them up. Now, if you don't, you know, want to use a knife, you don't feel that comfortable, there's all kinds of devices, um, mandolins and such, that you can dice up anything really fast. I just prefer to use my knife. Um, this doesn't have to be perfect. It's going to kind of get mashed up a little bit, so you know, don't worry too bad if your um, knife skills are just not up to par. They don't have to be in this one. So you're just going to do a small dice. On both onions. I'm in my pajamas right now because I wanted to do this right before I went to bed. Tomorrow is Friday and I didn't really want to have to worry about dinner tomorrow. I'm going to throw that piece out and don't look good. Um, I just didn't want to have to really worry about dinner a whole lot. So, I'm not. I'm going to do it the night before. And this is such a great meal to have on any fall or winter evening. Just wonderful. Remember the bean and bacon candle soup? Did you guys ever have any of that? I used to have that as a kid. That was like the only thing with beans in it that I would actually eat. So over the years, I have made my own version. And this is it. And this recipe really couldn't be easier, I promise. You can dice them up a little bit more. Hey, wearing long sleeves. It's coming down here tonight. My husband likes to put the heat like on, I don't know, 70 when we're not, you know, in the room, which I totally understand, but, oh, it's cold. I normally do not cook with my um, sweater or long sleeve, but tonight I am. So there's the two onions ready to go. Let's move those out of the way. Now with the carrots. I think I'll probably take three or four of these. I'll run my trusty little peeler here over most of the carrot. 
carrots make it sweeter. I know it's crazy, but if you serve more carrots to your kids, you'll be surprised at how much they'll like it. Jackson actually likes carrot juice, and um, it's because it's sweet. So all I do is cut the ends off of the carrots, just like that, scar them, and then all I do is run my knife down the carrot best I can, just like that, and then roughly that size. Again on this one. Watch your fingers. Do one more. Like I said, we like carrots. So just peel it. Bring your knife down it. Sometimes you just have to take the pieces to break off. Same here. It's a thick piece of carrot. The next job is getting the beans, and we're going to check them and make sure there's no rocks, no debris, because that does happen with beans. Okay, I just like to pour them in a bowl. I'll do one package at a time. You just kind of look around, find anything that, like this little half a bean, and go out. I do have the organic, so there's less pebbles and rocks and debris in. But it's still always good to check them. If they're on anything that doesn't look good. Alright, those look great. So now it's just time to assemble it. Super easy. Okay, so I've already added three cups of water. I'm adding my fourth one now. I'm going to add my entire box of chicken stock. You could use um, like a vegan stock if that's something you wanted to do and you can leave out the bacon too. There we go. All of our liquids are in. Slide the beans in. You are going to add your carrots and onions. Just add them right in. scoop. I usually use my bench scraper, but I'm trying not to use that many utensils tonight. I'm just going to stir that around. Now we're going to crumble in our bacon. So just crumble it in as you go. You don't want really big pieces, but we love bacon, so hands would be greasy after this job. be so good. Good enough. Okay. My hands. And now we're going to add our, our herbs. So we're going to add one bay leaf right in. That's a small one. We better add one more. Okay. Then we're going to add Oh, got our garlic. So what I like to do with the garlic in this is just add the clo the cloves whole. And let me find my knife. Um, I just take the skin off of them and just add them right in. One. We're gonna use four of them. My family absolutely 
loves garlic. I used to think they didn't, but they do. Two. You don't have fresh garlic. You can always use like the minced kind that comes in a jar. You could also use um, some powdered garlic. If I was using like powdered garlic, um, I would probably use at least um, three tablespoons, at least. And last piece. Sometimes it's hard to get that skin off of them. You just want to hit them with your knife. I know you can't see me, but that's what it looks like after you hit the garlic with the back of your knife and just pop it right on in. We're going to add our rosemary. You can also use dry. I'm going to use about a half teaspoon of the red pepper flakes. We're going to use about the same in dried thyme. If I can get it out, just shake it in. Next, I'm adding about a teaspoon of bacon, or bacon, a a, of um, pepper, and about a tablespoon of salt. Those beans are going to need more salt in the morning, but stir it up. It already looks beautiful. I, again, you're going to mash it up. It's going to get thick. Put the lid on it. And cook it, like I said, on low for 10 to 12 hours, which mine is set. Or cook it on high for 6 to 8 hours. So this is going to cook all night, and our dinner is basically um, done for tomorrow. I'm going to make some cornbread to go with it, but we will check back on it in the morning. So this is cooked all night on 10 hours, and then has been on warm ever since. Now, when I first got up, this did need about two cups of extra water. The beans soak it in, so if you notice that your crock pot is like full of beans that need, um, you know, more water, add some more water. I added about two cups. So I'm gonna take out the bay leaf, stir it up a little bit. It looks amazing. Look at that. Smells really nice, too. Now you could definitely just serve it like this, but there's something extra that I really like to do. Um, I like to take my emulsifier, it's just a hand one, put it in, and just mash up a few of the beans, not the whole pot. Mine sounds funny, don't it? Now a um, uh, potato masher will do the same. This will kind of thicken the soup up, break up some of that bacon. I only want to do it a little bit. Let me stir it. I'm not doing a whole lot. Again, you can totally do this with a potato masher. And that is it. So I'm going to serve it up and show you how delicious the soup will be. So here it is. I've served it up. And usually I serve it on a plate with a piece of cornbread. I still have to make that right before dinner. But you can serve it up with any kind of bread. It's this delicious bean and bacon soup. It's got carrot, beans, bacon. It's just amazing. It smells amazing. It tastes amazing. It's super easy to make. The crock pot did all of the work for me. You can find this recipe below in the down bar and also on my blog at kjaggers.com. I also link all of my videos on my Pinterest page, so you can definitely hop over there, and that is also linked below. Um, this is perfect for any fall, winter night when you're just wanting something cozy and delicious. The crock pot has done all the work for me, and... We're going to have a wonderful meal tonight. So thanks again for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if you make this wonderful soup. And I will see you guys really soon. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe if you're not already.